Okay, everybody. Um, this is so. This is the uh, the final session before lunchtime. And what I thought we'd do would be to look at um, innovation. So, uh, a very important uh, challenge for us within our group is to try and come up with ways in which we can demonstrate that the we're actually addressing the criteria that our funders are going to use to evaluate our work. Uh, and one of the questions I've been faced with in the past is what innovation are you bringing to this, this activity? So to start off with, um, what I'm going to do is to talk about two, uh, two issues about innovation uh, in a couple of minutes. One, the first one is I'm going to give an example of an organization that I, I found on the internet that uh, are actually practicing innovation on water, which is called the Athena, no sorry, the Antenna Foundation. Does anybody have any dealings with this? It's a Swiss organization uh, which deals in water, sustainable development, and innovation. Anybody, any experiences or work for the organization? Have heard of the organization? Nobody's nodding. So this is just a, an example that I thought was interesting to see in terms of practical uh, ex you know, manifestation of how an organization tries to engage with the same sort of the challenges that we're dealing with. The second thing I thought I'd look, look at briefly is about theory. And there's uh, the idea of water innovation studies is now really uh, increasing in interest. And there was a publication by some academics from Holland uh, l last year about a taxonomy of water innovation studies. Has anybody any dealings with these academics? You're quite prominent in the field. No? OK. Uh, so I'll just go through those in a minute, just to give a flavour of what it is that we're um, that's going on. But also, more importantly, we're trying to do some work based on these two areas. It's trying to look at how the practice of uh, water innovation studies can be looked at in a different way. Uh, I think this is a very interesting study, but we're trying to do it in a different way that means makes sense to us. But before I do that, one of the things that we're quite keen to do is the next steps. In other words what can colleagues do that's slightly removed from the core activity that they have within Safe Water? So I'm just starting off with this quest, these questions. Uh, what does innovation mean in, in the context of your research? In other words, innovation being doing new things or bringing it to uh, the market. What knowledge gaps exist in terms of your approach to innovation, given that we've been very clear over the last number of days that we, we're working in very specialized areas, um, and that means that whilst we're experts in those areas, we're also not always clear about what's happening in complementary areas. And lastly, and most importantly, what are the next practical steps you would like to take in order to address innovation in your work? And this is all in the context of how we're going to be evaluated. So the valuation is in capacity building. You know, so is it that you're you're interested in trying to work in areas that are not your core area in other disciplines, such as business and management, if you're interested in that? What about partnerships? Are you interested in partnering with some of our NGOs and trying to do joint co publications if you're not already doing that? There's also the water challenge, which everybody is focusing in on, but also this interdisciplinarity is TD is working in some activity with colleagues in terms of this area, something that you could do. And lastly, in terms of global networks. So I'd ask you to think about what, is it, what does innovation mean in the context of your research? What, what don't you know? We have experts here, but what is it that you feel from what you've heard over the last couple of days that you don't know and we should know better? Uh, and what are the next practical steps? Because an output of this is what, what, what are we going to do that's not the core thing that we're doing within the program already, because that's where we'll be demonstrating these things. So in terms of that, can you have a, a chat or discussion with the person beside you about what is it that we want to do, discuss this, but then we need to come up with some practical actions or next steps that demonstrate that we're integrating uh, between the different partners that we have in the group, both different disciplines, different NGOs in different countries. So can you talk about that first of all, and let's surface and capture some of the ideas that you might have from listening to the work over, 
our presentations over the last two days, two and a half days. Do you want to do that for five or ten minutes? Talk. So I. Uh, the last session then is about innovation, and basically, uh, what I'm, what we're interested in as a team is to make sure that we can demonstrate that we're uh, being innovative in some way. Now, the three questions might seem random. So, where do you think they came from? Some textbook, Mike. No, it didn't, Patty. It came from the panel that I, that awarded us the, the money. So, this is what panel members asked us. So, it's not some airy fairy innovation management discussion in a textbook. This is what real people said to us. You've come to us asking us for money. This is what we're going to ask you. So they asked us these questions. And when they did, we sort of took a second look and said, hold up, right, OK, uh, let's think about it for a minute. So this is the sort of thing that we're being asked to. And certainly, if we're going for more money, if we're trying to be effective and demonstrate we've actually made an impact, it's that this is the common sense questions, well, the simple, the deceptively simple questions that will be asked about the work that we're doing, whether we're a scientist, an engineer, social scientist, or whatever. So what does innovation mean in the context of your work or research? So you have to have some sort of sense that it's new, it's different. Why should they give you money if it's just been done before? A second question is what knowledge gaps exist in terms of your approach to innovation? There has to be a knowledge gap, otherwise, why are you researching the thing? You know, what is it that you don't know? And lastly, what are the practical steps you're going to take in order to address innovation? These are the practical things funders on a panel asked us. So what's your what's the reply coming out? What do you think? What is what's your reply? If you're sitting in front of that panel in two years' time? <laughs> Nigel, tell us. <laughs> Room's bigger than you'd think when you don't have the mic. Um, in the context of my research in the university, innovation is coming up with new ways to answer the fundamental biological questions that we're asking. Now, I know that's not... Yeah, I'm on the panel. What, what, what do you think my reaction to that's going to be? I'm on the panel. I've oh, you're not going to give me the money. <laughs> I'll say, give me a break. I mean, what, what, are, you, what are you doing that's going to make an impact? So mm -hmm. tell me, what is your innovation all about what's what does it mean to you in the real world hard question very hard question <laughs> anybody else what does innovation patty what does innovation mean to you uh, well n never mind to me but in terms of safe water our innovation was that we were going to do something totally different we were not inventing a new technology and going to push that onto the world we were going to go right back to the start we we're going to co-develop appropriate solutions with appropriate technology for the appropriate setting in collaboration with the end users. So what that, that in academic research is completely innovative. So what's, the, what's this co-creation thing you're talking about then? Where you actually listen to what the user wants and design a solution to that. You don't impose your knowledge and your fancy technology on somebody who, who doesn't want it, can't use it, and can't benefit from it. So if I go to one of the NGOs that were involved in the project, will they say that, will they tell me as a panel member that you've actually done that over the four years? I, I, I'm not the right person to ask. There's <laughs> NGOs here, you can ask them. Do you think we're being effective, this, this co-creation? Are we convinced in ourselves? Um, honestly? Yeah, tell no. me. No. Right, so there's a question about co-creation. I think we, we like to think we are, but I, I don't, and we may do some of it, but we don't do enough. Why don't we do enough of that? What do you, th you know? I, I'm not answering any more your question. Ask, <laughs> I'm not. It's not a you and me discussion. The panel ask some other members. I'm happy to answer, but I think <laughs> I think you should maybe get another opinion rather than just mine. So, Paddy's, uh, I'm on the panel and, and I'm trying to get um, an understanding of what's innovative about the work of Safe Water, because these are the sorts of questions we're asked. Um, we've said that part of the idea was the co-creation of value, and yet when you're trying to do that, that's difficult. And you're right, I mean, it's a, the idea of, of co-creation is an innovation, and it's a difficult thing to do. Because at the end of this discussion, this, when I was uh, 
articulating the idea about transdisciplinarity, they said that's going to be very difficult to do because it's working outside the normal silos that everybody does in their work activity. But we have to try and demonstrate what that is, and that's what this last question is. What practical steps, you know, before we leave today, there has to be something that we can do that captures that integration, that captures that we move from what you do to help someone else or work with them. So any, any other views on that? The, that's the purpose of the capacity and capability elements. That's the purpose of the training workshops, of the visits, of the skills gap analysis, of the everything that we do within the, pro that's the primary focus of the project. Doing things differently to solve problems. The technology, the other aspects are, are interesting, but they're not the primary focus of the project. Yeah, and I think it's actually worth saying and that. that, that, that again. very difficult for people to get their heads around. Yeah. And we're not good at that either. Yeah, I think that's very important because these are the evaluation criteria. The challenge is a given, but it's these other, these are equally, e equal evaluation. So that's what we have to come up with. Any other thoughts? I mean, what, what do you think about, you know, off the top of your head, what could we do to um, try to be innovative, to try to do this integration, co-creation that we've, we're saying we're trying to do? What, what, any other thoughts about that? Okay, so it is a challenge. I'll give you an example. There's an organization I'm, I'm working with which is called the Environmental Justice Network Ireland, EJNI. And they, it's run by, it's run by my daughter actually, uh, who's a, a doctor of uh, environmental law at Newcastle University. And she has, got, it's an impact case study that they're doing and basically what they've done is to try to integrate the different stakeholders in a particular area, which is environmental law, which isn't that far removed from uh, water and the water challenge in the world. Uh, so they've created a forum of communication where you've got different stakeholders, different community groups who are on a website who can see practical uh, solutions to things where there's illegal dumping of waste in their community. So one of the examples is where people have buried waste illegally and it's polluting a river, uh, which means that the fish stocks in that river are dying. So. Um, you've got community groups who don't know what to do. So what they've done on this site is to bring together practical toolkits and processes uh, and advocacy services that lawyers and environmental lawyers will give pro, pro bono for, for free uh, to the different groups of people who need assistance but don't aren't aware of the range of different solutions that are available. So that's a tangible site that captures the different tools and techniques uh, and practical interventions that you can do for environmental justice, basically. So that's one aspect of doing that, and it's one way of demonstrating integration by this forum. Uh, and it's very, very successful. It started up early, uh, earlier on this year, and it's got an awful lot of attention and interaction. So that's just one example of a tangible step. Uh, I'll go on and give you two, two other examples of innovation just to round off uh, the stuff that we're talking about. But I would urge you to uh, think about this sort of stuff because it is a challenge. As Patty said, it's not easy to do this. It's outside our comfort zone. It's something that, you know, if you're an academic, I was speaking to the, the colleagues at the back there, they're saying it's, it's not, you know, it's outside my discipline. I'm gonna be, my success is gonna be measured by my publications. This sounds like, you know, not really what, I know it sounds interesting, but how do you actually go about getting involved with uh, another discipline or another user? And that's what where some sort of forum that we could host, I think would be quite an interesting and actually demonstrate that we're doing this sort of stuff. So what I, I would ask you to think about the qu these questions about during the next number of years what, that we've got on the project to make sure that you're trying to stretch your and, and problem-solving approach to other areas, whether, whether it's NGOs or other disciplines. So I'd, I'd ask you to think about that. I'm speaking to a number of people over the next couple of days to see how they're gonna work with myself in terms of uh, TD uh, and innovation and to see whether that input from myself can complement the work that they're doing. So any last observations on this idea, the idea that we have to 
try, we don't have, we have to demonstrate actually, that we're going beyond what we're comfortable with to demonstrate these things. And I think the workshops in themselves are a demonstration. The fact we're sitting here for days, listening to each other and talking socially, is a demonstration of integration. Um, I remember one of the first interactions I had with colleagues at night in Ulster, who, from a scientific background, was about what is knowledge, and we had a discussion about that, which I've discovered and they've discovered that we've different perceptions of what that is. So think about this, and hopefully uh, you will work with colleagues and try to do some sort of integrative activity that's going to be able, what we can demonstrate. So just to move on then, I thought I'd give two examples of innovation in, in the water sector. And the first one is this idea, this uh, example from Switzerland. What is it? There's feedback on it. Okay. I thought I'd give two examples, and again, this is uh, these are just to give you a, a sense of the stuff that we are, are currently interested in uh, in our small team at, at back in, in Ulster University. And again, if you're interested in working with us or a villain of our uh, insights into this, then please do contact me. So the first one is uh, a Swiss organization who, who are doing this. So it's innovation development from research to practice. And the second one is the, the, lit, the academic literature, um, which is looking at Innova uh, water innovation studies. Um, so we're actually doing some work on this at the moment. Um, so the Antenna Foundation, um, it's really an organization which is trying to look at all of these different areas. It's looking at water, uh, energy, nutrition, agriculture, medicine, and microcredit. It's, an e it's an uh, a charity based in, in uh, Switzerland, as I say. And what they're doing, they've got a model of interaction that they're using, which is trying to do, it's doing research and development, field tests, and dissemination of results. And again, this is uh, for the purpose of job creation. Uh, not the same as what we're doing, but it's given you an idea of the, 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 the model which is being used here. And the focus for this particular NGO is uh, job creation in, in the local communities. So that's the, that's the sort of Asset test, if you like, if you ask them what their innovation is, but it's about job creation. So that's one. Of, uh, these slides will be available afterwards on the uh, our website, by the way. So this is the the dominant model that they have for that. Uh, they do R and D, so they're doing scientific research. Uh, they're doing this for they're responding to the needs of people living at the base of this hypothetical pyramid, and it's really to try and directly address the needs of people in, in, in real life. It's doing field testing, which is what we're doing as well. So we're, we're, we're actually overlapping. In, they're doing about technologies, health solutions, and commercial models. And it's interesting how the commercial models are part of this process. Uh, and as I said, one of the synthesis projects that we're doing in TD is enterprise and entrepreneurship that I mentioned yesterday. Now, that's an integral part of what they're doing. And we heard from Samantha Ray about micro businesses that are involved in the, uh, the activities that they're doing in India. Uh, and it's the idea of this commercial models and business models. They're also dissemination through social enterprise and microfinance and partnerships and networks. So the words there are very similar to the words that we're being asked to engage with. And it's illustrating how other organizations have been doing this stuff for several years now, actually. Also, and interestingly, on their site, they have devices. Now, uh, given our discussion about chlorine, these are chlorine-based devices, but they make this explicit link into devices that can be used in the field. Uh, they've got these different devices. They've got descriptions of what they are. And as I said, they're chlorine-based. and so on, and they have these, uh, it's hard to see, but they've got reagents that they use and supply for that. So it's quite interesting seeing that, that this approach was rubbished, in a sense, by colleagues saying it just wouldn't work. Uh, they also do training, training options for their devices. Uh, they, have, they charge for those, they can get, you can get grants and so on for that. Uh, so it allows 
they're trying to link in with local production of sort of uh, the chemical needed for this uh, uh, and so on. So it's really what's interesting. It's a circular idea of trying to create jobs as part of the process, as the explicit output of the process, which is different from our approach. Um, and that's that. So my point is that there are organisations you doing similar things, but there are different approaches to that, and are bringing in these ideas about making impact, providing devices, and a sort of full circle of knowledge about it. Uh, so I just provide that as an example. A second example then is the theory bit, and this is, as I say, it shows you how this idea of uh, water innovation studies is now starting to actually get uh, mileage or credibility in the academic literature. So this is a journal of cleaner production. These two uh, the colleagues from uh, the Netherlands, uh, and they have, in their article, if you read it, if you're one of the PhDs or postdocs at the back, uh, it's an extremely interesting study of what is water innovation studies, um, which cuts right across different disciplines and different users. And they did this come out in two th last year, uh, and they try to do a taxonomy of different types of innovation to do with water, different stages of innovation, and also given the transdisciplinary approach that we said uh, uh, the day before yesterday, which is you can look at a problem at different levels. They actually do that as well, landscape level, uh, the sector, the organization, and the organizational unit and innovation itself. So this is where we're now starting to see water innovation studies become a recognized um, domain of interest with a particular field of people that are working across disciplines. You don't have to read the article, but this is the, the taxonomy. So they have a whole series of different categorizations of innovation levels, stages of innovation and types, and all of the details in that. So it's a, well, we find that extremely interesting, but we find it confusing as well. Uh, so, so what we're trying to do is do an alternative uh, model of what water innovation is, based on how you articulate the problem, uh, the language used to do that, and the context. Uh, and addresses, as I say, some of these issues about types of innovation and so on. Now, one of the things is, given that colleagues studying and researching fundamental stuff about uh, radical innovation and products and processes and services, I mean, part of the, the, the contribution that we can do in terms of working together is that we can bring this to bear. I've, quite, I've uh, qu gone into this stuff in a lot of detail about what is innovation. And given where you're coming from, it would be a useful collaboration uh, to work in that way. So that's it. Um, it's really showing that innovation is in water studies, whilst it's been on the go for many years, it's actually now crystallizing around a couple of key areas, such as water innovation studies, and also in terms of models of uh, practice relating to water that are linked to different outputs such as job creation or fundamental science or um, social enterprise or things like that. Uh, so the purpose of this was to give you a sense of what's available, what we're interested in, and what might be interesting in terms of yourself. So in terms of that, what what's the next step? So can you just think about having seen that, can you talk to the person beside you for a couple of minutes and say, well, can you come up with any sort of actions or recommendations about how our group or how you individually could engage with the idea of innovation and water studies. Do you want to talk together for a couple of minutes and I'll ask some people? So, so the question, the fa the fa the question I've asked you to consider to f finish off this morning is what uh, what are the next practical steps you would take like to take in order to address innovation in your area? Now, at the back we have our our postdocs, so to, to get some fresh thinking, I mean you, you've got a sense hopefully of what the challenge is within our group. So what what is an obvious, straightforward thing that you would suggest that people uh, the the different Dis disciplines and NGOs in this group could maybe do to demonstrate more impact? Just the people at the back, postdocs. 
sorry about that. Yeah. Um, we actually came up with different discussions, yes. and we targeted some points which were adequate monitoring, provide better communication for co-designing, as well as try to level technology development uh, in order to include different activities, uh, considering NGOs, communities, and the academia, and include different disciplines. Considering we are uh, a very diverse group here, yeah. this is something we could discuss about. But how do you do that in pro I mean, we, the project is nearly two years, uh, and what, what we find is everybody's working away in the particular disciplines, but what practical steps could you suggest or occur to you? Um, the black background group, the guys at the back still, any practical? <laughs> okay, Bill, go. <laughs> Transdisciplinary WhatsApp group <coughs> of the postdocs, the lecturers and professors will be very, very busy. So the postdocs and PhD students drive it forward and keep their bosses in the loop. It's already there. It's called the Early Career Researcher WhatsApp group. Okay. So that then. So that, let's just rec recap on that. Um, Bill, I thought I think that's a good idea. So, what you're suggesting is that, given if it's a problem that we're working in our area, our disciplines, yeah. and this stuff is slightly, you know, I've got enough to do in my own discipline, that this is slightly uh, more, is to get the postdocs, the research associates, to form a forum. Well, sp sp I, you don't want to make it kind of specific groups so that other people are involved, but kind of, I suppose, they maybe already exist, but project groups of, you know, key postdocs or PhD students involved from Contour Azul, CTA, that's what I kind of mean, you know, yeah. drive that forward. Cause talk, talk more about WhatsApp. Because the time difference thing, you know, the six hour time difference, yeah. but there's a reference there too. You have the text and you can refer back to it. So less is lost in yeah, translation. So is that something, but you're, you're saying we're, are we re already doing, we're already doing it? Sorry. So one of the ideas in work package six was that, as you say, Mike, the academics have a small, and I gurned about this in Mexico if you were there, the were academics only have a small part of their time on the project, mm. but the postdocs and the PhD students have full time and the the academics should step back and allow those that are developing the expertise with the time including the partners in NGOs they they should be driving the project okay and so one way that email is horrible everybody if you don't agree that email is horrible put your hand up email <laughs> is terrible big long messages that you think you should respond to, most of it's nonsense, <coughs> irrelevant. But a WhatsApp message, bang. Is that is that That's the it. right? People okay. seem to like to communicate in shorter, snappier, um, more portable forms than email. Okay. And one of the ideas was this early career researcher forum yeah. would allow the people really working on the project a mechanism by which they could speak to each other that wasn't so formal. I'm just wondering, is that the best title for it? I mean, er, what, the guys at the back, is, is there any career researcher forum a, a good title? For I, think that? I think it's just called the Safe Water Forum, but it's for the... Okay. Um, okay, so the idea then is to get the postdocs, uh, the PhDs, the research associates to drive a forum, which, given that that's their, their focus and interest, which then draw in and invite other people to come in and share their information. It's just like this uh, environmental justice network forum that we have. Is that, is, that, is that an idea that would have resonance with yourself in terms of your colleagues and your group here? <laughs> uh, uh, work together, in my point of view, it's not easy. Um, uh, for example, in my research group, I, uh, I assist in all of the research. We are working yeah. in different lines inside of the Safe Water project. Yeah. Uh, I work in together with the, uh, another groups, uh, uh, Medellin, Euster, um, 
uh, I thought uh, a little bit less with CTA, CTA and Cantaro Azul. Cantaro Azul a little bit more because Cantaro Azul gave me the Mesita Azul ray. I am very happy uh, because um, I think in improved the technologies we're working as well. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's a, it's a, a, another lines inside of the Safe Water project. Um, I, 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 I don't know. There are many options, uh, but we need to think about what is the best option, option for the Safe Water project. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to talk. Uh, we talk every uh, 50 days, every two weeks. We talk in, in the in the uh, activities we are doing. But um, in my point of view, I need to talk more in another work packets. Uh, maybe. For example, I am in the work pack seven, but I need more information for working well. Uh, maybe sometimes it's only talking. So th <laughs> I, this has come up before about the work packages in themselves, or it's, is it an, it's an administrative process, the, the, the design of work packages? Does that work as a mechanism, or is there some other cross? That was the whole idea behind the TD, was the cut across work packages. But I think there's a natural reluctance to work out, because you're doing work inside the work package, you're going to be judged by that. So there's a natural resistance to doing more stuff that's diverting you from your core activity. Sometimes it's because we have a, a specific knowledge. And sometimes thinking social science or a business area, it's a very hard for yes. engineer and uh, engineer uh, who is engineering. This is the point, but the the idea is how we we working together in 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 each work packet, because uh, sometimes I don't know what is the information, what what the work packets working, and how I, I improve uh, this work packet. Uh -huh. This is the point. I don't know uh, work packets works. Uh, I don't know how how enjoying of of these packets uh, sometimes. Yes. This is the point. I think this is a very good discussion because uh, work packets, they are purely for management purposes. And it is actually quite conflicting because it's a request coming from the funder. So we can basically report on our achievements more easily. Mm -hmm. But because we have cross-disciplinary um, approaches and uh, teams that are working concomitantly in different areas of the project. It means that even for management purposes, it's very challenging. Mm -hmm. So for instance, when we have to report on the financial aspect of Save Water, uh, sometimes uh, we have been uh, requested in the past to break down the cost by work package. But that is impossible to do mm -hmm. because we are talking about um, one, two, three, four, five organizations working that have different financial styles that they have to report in a different way to their own organizations. Plus you have people that are reporting that might be working specifically in microbiology, for instance, yes. but they are ex um, their expenditure comes across three to four different work packets. So I think it is something that needs to be aligned as well with the funder, because they are expecting us to promote the transdisciplinary side of things, but they are also imposing some structures that restrict us to do that. Yeah, I mean, it's a very good point, because even the funders are conflicted in how they assess these sorts of programs, because when I was in London uh, a second time, I asked them, how, you know, how do you evaluate impact? They've actually got three different ways of doing that. One of them is log frame. So log frame is, like a uh, systematic step-by-step -step approach, which must have been invented by an engineer or a scientist, but it goes through in a very particular way and that you can clearly see what direction you're going in. So that's one way, log frame, logical framework approach, which is fine, it's very traditional, it came from the United States military in the 19 1970s. A second approach is one called theory of change, which I know some of our colleagues are doing. The fundamental thing about theory of change is you're not sure at the start what's going to emerge from your process. And the fundamental bit of theory of change is that during the process of any activity, you surface assumptions about what you're doing. 
you, you get more into detail about what's actually happening. And these meetings are, are doing just that. They're surfacing assumptions, misunderstandings, and things like that about a process that's okay to do. And certainly GCRF are very, when you're doing the applications to them, they demand both log frame, which is a step-by-step -step approach, but also theory of change, which is the overarching logic of what you're doing and allows for the emergence of new ways of doing things. The third approach that they're now very interested in is TD. So that's where the funders are still debating what is the most effective way, and these three things are acceptable to them. Uh, but I, I think you're right, the work package structure is an administrative one, it has to be, you have to have some sort of reporting structure. But in itself, that means that we're st we sh should still be open to innovation, such as a forum that our postdocs and PhDs and research associates drive, and it either it'll be a disaster, nothing will happen, or it'll be a fantastic thing that will happen that other colleagues can then dip into and see what the, the narrative is about. So I think that maybe, is WhatsApp the best forum for that? Well, the fact is controllers don't actually want it. It's not, you know, that's, that was one of the things we talked about. Heck, sorry. Hector, well, I don't mean to just, but it, it's a need there that was identified during that, you know, three week visit I had. Specifically, Hector thought it would maybe help. Yeah, so Hector, so what? what Sorry. <laughs> what, what do you think, why, what do you think, why is there a need, a perception from Kataro Zul to have some sort of forum to, to share information? For us, uh, it's, um, it has been very useful to have a, a forum mm -hmm. or to have a group in, in WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. it, um, as Patty said, email, it's, uh, it's, it's a way to uh, to have the information uh, in a formal way, but at WhatsApp, it's a uh, very it's very quick, and you can answer even with a few, few words yes. and share uh, pictures, documents, anything. Okay. So for us, it's uh, very very useful. So okay, yeah. is is there is there uh, any examples of WhatsApp embedded in some sort of forum where you can have papers or links or something like that. Is there anybody aware of an effective forum that does this stuff already? Any thoughts? It's, it's a for does there exist a forum, a, a forum where you can have WhatsApp within that for short messages, but you can also see the resources uh, that we have in our group and links to other... No? There's lots of these document communication management tools. One is Basecamp, which we tried and it was crap. Another one is called Slack. Slack. Yeah. But within WhatsApp, you can upload documents, you can have links for websites, you can have photographs like we have. Um, and it seems to be very popular in, in South America. Okay. Maybe not so much in the UK. Yeah. All of yeah. the kids do it, Mike, but maybe not you and me. Um, My cra grandkids do it. <laughs> it seems to be something. Now, I would like to know if if other people think it's useful. Just because I thought it might be doesn't mean well it isn't because it's there and nobody uses it. Well, I think that's the thing but because we have to think. Ulysses was saying to me, "Gotta be careful and be responsible in what you post." Yeah. You know, you can say whatever you want, and that, and that has some elements of danger in, in, in a professional environment. Okay. So users have to be responsible. So it's just, um, for, it's, that's private to the group? Ask at ask the back, Mike. Ask okay. at the people that might want to use it, which is not perhaps the, the academics. Okay, so the guys at the back, the postdocs, uh, what, what would work? What's the, what's the uh, contemporary emerging ideas of how you share your topics that might be of use, a model that we could use in, in Safewater? Uh, I've only used Slack from from those that were mentioned. You yeah. can upload documents from Google Drive, and uh. there are private chats as well, and okay. some with groups. And you can also set the time in which you want to 
see and receive notifications, so I think it's good. Okay. But I don't know how to manage that. I, I've only been a user of the technology. Okay. So as, you, as you've heard, Patty was saying, we've used a number of systems which were not successful. We've used Dropbox, we've used uh, Basecamp and things like that. So it's like the actual use, use of the technology. If there's some massive effort to manage it and monitor it and things like that, it's not going to work. So I think if I think there must be some way where we can have a forum. I think this is this is important, so that someone can say to me, Mike, what is TD? I have no idea what it is. Send me some article about it now. Uh, it's that speed of doing things that everybody knows. It's one location, and that it's not that, and that it's got a uh, all of our uh, links or whatever in that. I th and it grows organically. But I th I think the point being made by Bill was. If the postdocs and the PhDs and the research associates take ownership of it, then we can contribute our stuff as as as, uh, as needed, basically. Any other thoughts from the younger, the, uh, the the earlier researchers? Any other thoughts about how this thing's? Because you're seeing a real life research group trying to to work out how to integrate and how to work across these different silos that we naturally work in. Any other any final thoughts on that? At the back, the early career researchers. Well, uh, what I, th I was thinking is, and we were discussing here, is uh, about, uh, I think that the, the key word, is, I think, is time. Yeah. Because time is different for uh, different kind of research. When we are in the academic, we have time for like a master. We have two years to do a master to do uh, the PAGs for years. And sometimes the research needs more time. It's like here in the, in the Safe Water Project. You know, you have different times for engineering. Maybe you have uh, a year or six months to, to do a new approach of a, of a technology or a, a prototype. And for social uh, sciences, you need like two years, four years, and and so go on. Mm -hmm. So I think time is very different for different aspects. You know, I think it's the <coughs> is uh, the challenge was. Uh, I think is is like that. You have to to put all this time together in the same project. Yes. I think it's very challenging. It, it is, and I think that's a very, very important point. I mean, part of this issue about timing is that the Safe Water's uh, f just over four years in, in duration. We're halfway through, I think, at the moment. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're, we're good way through it. But one of the things, I was involved in another research council of a funded project, which is very big. And what happened was, at the end of the project, we looked at the criteria, at the end of the project, we looked at the criteria and said, what, what have we done over the last number of years to do this? And I think people were panicking about how can we, f how can we change the work that we've done to fit in with the criteria? So in terms of this project, I think it's important that we understand the five criteria, which are these, which is how we're going to be evaluated. And I, I think it'd be a good idea if we could demonstrate now how we're do what we're doing in that uh, so that in two years' time, we're not so running. Vanessa is not running around, hopefully, not running around, uh, looking at where's the evidence for this stuff. Did, did you people not decide to do this two years ago? This is the time to do it, and I think the forum is a very. I think that's that's something there that we could we could build on. Any last ob observations? Um, can I make three? <laughs> do I okay. have time? Yep. Um, uh, the first one directly li uh, linked to the forum uh, idea. So basically, there is a, a knowledge that can be shared, sharing best practice. So the call, which we were funder, they have a consortium, basically a forum just for the project managers mm -hmm. to be sharing best practice among themselves. Yes. And it works exactly, it's, it's very similar to what you described. 
So basically, it's a page online. I wouldn't have the specifics of how it works. Okay. Uh, but then, very simply, you uh, access a web page and then you log in and you can say, Mike, can you upload a um, TD report because I'm needing for a work that I'm doing at the moment and things like that. Yeah. So I can look into that if it is of interest of everyone. So just to recap, so already within GCRF, the managers of different projects have got a forum that they work together. So it's obviously happening as we as we go so yeah exactly yeah. so if it is something that would facilitate everybody's work although i think that is something parallel because i still think that there are some cultural nuances that we should be respecting so for instance whatsapp which is much more broadly were uh, used in latin america yes uh, and it is a easy way to communicate and is encrypted so we wouldn't have to seek for authorization from our funder to be sharing information. Okay. So um, that is an one of the points. Uh, something that I have been working with University de, uh, of Medellin as well, with uh, Mateus, the in communications, it is to try to set up a Facebook page. This is though for dissemination purposes because um, because Facebook is much more used in Latin America than it is in the UK for actually sharing academic research and things like that. Okay. So it's just trying to identify what actually, sometimes innovation is not trying to create new things, it's trying to use what, is, what exists already, but um, that is suitable for the environment that you are insert. Okay, so. was there a third point? Uh, no, this was just one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second one, I, I don't know, well, it's just because you mentioned about uh, the funders are still trying to get their heads around what they actually want from the beneficiaries. Um, I don't know how much of interest that is for everyone, but basically, so I used to work um, for the UK government, designing the science innovation strategies to provide funding for academia, industry, and NGOs, basically. Uh, and it is quite interesting because this is a new model of funding. So although it is coming from the UK government, it is accessible um, throughout many different countries. Uh, and some people might think we already have our own local funding agencies. So for instance, you have FAPESP, CNPq, and other ones in Brazil. You have CONACIAS and CONCES in Mexico, Colombia. Mm -hmm. But they have actually been working for now six years together to try to design the approach to these funders. And what happens is that their pilot project was the Newton Fund that m a lot of people is prob probably familiar mm -hmm. with, which was a very top-down approach. So it was basically the government telling the uh, beneficiaries what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. And then for the GCIF, they got the lessons learned and that's why you have a panel that is asking you these questions. Yes. Because the panel is not anymore just government representatives making strategies for academia, NGOs, and other bodies to implement. Mm -hmm. It's basically they are trying to implement TD, mm -hmm. but they still don't have the management experience to understand exactly what they want out of it. Okay. Um, so what we're hearing is that this um, bottom-up approach where we have some sort of for I think the key thing is that everybody knows what, what's the mechanism for communication because we did struggle with this at the very start uh, in terms of the different mechanisms. If we could understand what it is and everybody is aware and can, can contribute to that if they see fit, I think that would be uh, a very useful thing. But I think the, the, the crux or genesis of the idea is that it's the, the postdocs, the research associates, drive it, and that, that draws in everybody else. And I think that's, that's probably a good way to do that. What, what do the guys at the back think? Is that a, would you be happy to do that if you're, if you're involved in Safe Water? To drive and manage it? <laughs> I'll, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Okay, so any last comments about innovation? I think one innovation is we need to communicate better 
to prioritize things and demonstrate we're actually working and integrating our, our, our activities in some way because our funders are going to ask us about that. So it's coming up to, uh, it's 25 past 12. So what, what are the, the next um, steps? We were having lunch at half 12, is it? We are having, we're having lunch now, yeah? Yeah, in five minutes' time, which means that I have time for one last comment. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I just would like to address um, what Lida, uh, the feedback she provided earlier. Um, I think that is extremely important uh, because our point actually with capacity building is try to get um, people in this integrated approach to understand the big picture of the project. Um, so that is one of my aims and my goals. Uh, now I've been in the project for only 12 weeks. <laughs> so what, what means that I've been trying to get out there and talk to people and get people to talk to each other. We had a kickoff TG um, meeting in Korean where we had Ani from Cantaro Azul. And the idea we had a day long with all work package, leaders and collaborators, uh, research assistants and PhDs to come together and share among themselves in um, an overview of each work package and try and to align because we are getting close to the field trials as well. So it's basically aligning schedule of work, but, but then supporting them in understanding the big picture. So that was the first initiative, and the idea is that it continues on. Okay, thank you. So, um, lunch, what are the arrangements for lunch? So half past, we're going. Yeah. Um, we are finished now, and we will return at 2 p.m. 2 p.m., yes? Yes, 2 p.m. And then yeah. Nigel will be doing his session Yeah, we will here. starting with Nigel. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's great. So thanks very much for your time, and let's break for lunch. Thank you. Thank you.